Hey, hi, thanks for joining me in this devlog. I'm making a third person shooter game where you can transform and climb stuff. This month I've been doing a lot of level design and since my game doesn't feature infinite areas I have to limit where players can go. In my game specifically this is quite tricky because the character can climb anywhere and so I can't just put some rocks or trees to block the path. Many games choose to just turn the entire area into an island and surround it with ocean, however I don't want levels to feel like small islands. I ended up making toxic water that kills the player when you get in contact with it. This way I can design rivers and lakes to guide players. Inspired by Nick Carver and Minions art, I've also put together a toxic waterfall. It mainly consists of one shader for the water itself, one shader for the rings near the bottom, and also some splashes and particle effects. Anyway, after adding the toxic water, I decided to finally put my mind to fixing an issue I'd been procrastinating for months. Previously, whenever players would climb a rotating surface, the creature wouldn't rotate with the surface properly. After a couple of days of trying to figure out the nightmare that is Quaternions, I actually found a really simple solution to fix this rotation issue. I ended up storing the creature's forward direction relative to the surface, so when the connected transform rotates, I can restore the local forward direction to a world direction and have the player look at the new forward direction. With that out of the way, I wanted to take a break from coding and work on some wildlife. Firstly, I've improved the animations for the snail elephant, as many of you pointed out it was looking a bit unnatural. I then added an essential feature that I forgot previously, wobbly eyes. As you can see, the eyes kinda bounce around and look much less static than before. Now since there's animals on land and in the sky, it makes sense to also add some life to the water, so I set out to design some alien fish. After modeling and texturing, I used the same technique that the birds use, where I spawn mesh particles and animate them through a shader. The shader for these fish was surprisingly simple, because their movement is pretty much just a sine wave. Unlike the birds that just fly in a straight line, these fish have to actually follow the river and avoid obstacles. To get them to follow a specific path, I used the splines plugin and got the particles to follow the spline. Next up, I worked on a new robot that flies around and scans the terrain. You can break it to get a very general map of the area. As always, I started with some modeling and texturing. After modeling, I made some flying animations, and for the movement I used the same system that the wildlife uses, where it takes random points in a given area and smoothly flies from one point to the next. I then added a damage system so it falls from the sky and shakes for a couple seconds before shutting down. Finally, I added a little interaction so after taking down the robot, you can actually view the map. Okay, before I move on to the next big update, first let's quickly go over some tiny changes. I've removed the stamina system from the last devlog because it didn't fit the game. The drones now have a horizontal glow inspired by Titanfall. I've toned down the jump height and added a little squash effect when you land. I finally set up source control to make sure I don't lose entire scenes again. Instead of notepad, I switched to a proper IDE. And lastly, I put together a mock-up for the main menu. Anyway, time for the main topic of this devlog, the new ammo system. I designed it so you can collect blue ammo blobs that can be used in any weapon. So for example, one ammo blob can be used to fire 30 rifle shots or 15 shotgun shots. Obviously, ammo blob doesn't sound great, so I had some ideas for more futuristic names for the ammo. I haven't really picked one of these yet, so let me know if you have any suggestions for cool names. In order to implement the new ammo system, I've updated the UI, the gun models, and most importantly, I've added a little companion that helps collect the ammo blobs. Initially, the companion was going to be a living animal, but after a week of several failed attempts, I decided to go for a little robot instead.
After modeling, texturing and animating the robot, I put together this cool liquid shader to show the collected ammo. When programming the gathering and following behavior for the robot, I wanted to try a behavior tree plugin to improve my workflow. After playing around in it for a bit, I managed to get some basic follow behavior to work. However, it took so much extra effort, I decided to go back to just code for now. I'll probably attempt to make another behavior tree later for more complex AI, because it did seem promising. After implementing the new ammo system, I did some level design again. More specifically, I needed to make some good rocks and also played around with the grass. In hindsight, I probably wasted a bit too much time on the grass, because I tried pretty much every possible solution. Instant grass chunks, geometry shaders, shell texturing and the built-in wheelbarrow system. After trying all of these, I was left with two grass types that I like, and so I did a small poll to see which one fit best. In the end, I just kept the exact same grass from before. Anyway, for the rocks, initially I had some really detailed ones that I tweaked to make them fit the game, but I ended up just making my own instead. To make a rock, I basically take a cube and cut off pieces until it looks rock shaped, which is surprisingly satisfying. Their main advantage over the initial high detail rocks is that level design is much easier, because there's way less tiny crevices and bumps. Now onto something I've been continuously working on for the last couple months, a better camera system. Originally, my camera system was completely custom, as past me figured it would give me more control over the camera implementation. The main issue with this approach was I had a hard time implementing camera collisions to keep the player in frame. Also, with the previous system, transitioning between different cameras and camera angles was a bit of a pain. I actually looked into Cinemachine before, but always figured it couldn't possibly have all the functionality I was looking for. What pushed me over the edge was this video by Robert Thompson, where he tried out Cinemachine and it pretty much did everything I was looking for. So I rebuilt the entire camera system, including the creature camera, the third person camera and the planet launcher camera in Cinemachine. With the new setup, adding collisions was as easy as clicking a button. Something a little more tricky is the creature follow behavior. Basically, I want players to have full control over the camera, but when players aren't actively moving their mouse, it should still automatically follow the creature around corners. To achieve this, I set the camera x-axis input through script, so it's basically like tricking Cinemachine into thinking the player is moving their mouse. I also added a custom damping system because the built-in one looked very jittery, and I made a component that modifies the camera orbit radius, so it moves a bit closer to the player when indoors. Finally for this devlog, I designed a robot I wanted to make for a while. It's a giant walking robot that the cyborgs use for transportation. The idea is you can climb into it while it's moving and defeat it from the inside. I've not yet completed the robot because I moved on to different, more important stuff first. However, I did finish modeling and I'm pretty happy with the concept so far. I'll probably continue working on the robot next time, and until then, I hope this was interesting. Thanks for watching!